I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we're going back to the Adventure Time cartoon with a Fiona doll. This time we're going to start with something unusual, so come along with me, with the Barb and Lassier. Welcome back to the most exciting part of the workshop as of recently, which is the Lassier! Fiona has a crystal sword and I thought maybe it would be nice to make it with acrylic and make it light up. And I have here this color of acrylic, which is pink. We're gonna try it and see if it will be pink enough. While I cut things out and you see my happy face in a second, Exo has asked me to share with you about their anniversary sale. They have some great deals going on, which you can learn about in the description in the video. So if you've been wanting to get a laser for yourself, check out the description. Also, I made the Enchantarium bling blings into earrings, like one of you suggested in the comments. And I'm showing you off them expertly, like the professional influencer that I am. <laughs> They look orange. <laughs> Magic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I thought I would sand it, but I decided to fill it with UV resin instead. To prevent the resin leaking everywhere, I'm gluing the pieces to a transparent tape. I filled all the gaps with three passes of resin and cured them in the UV lamp. I think I leave it like this for now and let Barb figure out the rest. Okay, so Alex has left me with this sword thing and what I'm gonna do here is file the back of it down so that I can glue it to the holographic piece and have it not as bulky. I recently got a random orbiter sander so I decided that to save my fingers I will <laughs> just use that. And with the 40 grit I was able to pretty much just chomp away at the acrylic, which is surprisingly hard. But eventually I managed to send the back flat and give it back to Alex so that she can turn it into a sword thing. And then I just made a really simple circuit with two LEDs and one battery. The LEDs will get sunk into the handle of the sword, which I had to drill a little bit. And then the little cable will go to the battery that will be hidden in the backpack. And then Alex will show you how to glue it together. And I think that with all of these pieces, we can move on to the usual stuff, which is sewing and painting. Thank you for coming coming to my dead dog, bye! We thought that Fiona's figure could use a bit of oomph, so we're going to use our Attica Flex for this girl, so it's time to undress Rosamon. She got a bit tangled in the vines and taking off the bodysuit was a pain, and we are making a new Digimon soon, so I will have to redress her for the photo shoot and go through all of this in reverse. Well, that's a future bar problem. Oh no, the pussy. I gave the body a nice warm bath because it was really dusty and after it dried I did some maintenance in the form of a fine powder to make the silicone less sticky. Welcome to the first annual boob showdown! <laughs> so I think that these are a bit too big for this particular character. Makes the body look very adult woman and I'm not sure I want that. This is the regular bust, the default bust from Smart Doll and I feel like it's kind of not big enough <laughs> and like it doesn't fully cover the sides here so I think actually the medium smooth it's going to be a winner here, but one problem with vinyl on silicone is that it can cause damage to the vinyl. So I think what we're gonna do is instead of using the seamless arms, which are also silicone and would rub onto the vinyl, I'm just gonna use the regular Smyrtle arms with this bust and I'm going to make a small cover since I intend to cover this part with clothes anyways. I don't think it's gonna be an issue and it's gonna protect the vinyl if there was to be any damage. It gives the big hips and and the chest is a bit more appropriately sized. All boobs are awesome, but for this character, I think this is the way to go. For the little cover, I used some white lycra and cut out a rectangle, put it up against the body to measure out the circumference and sewed it into a tube. And I think it doesn't need to be more complicated than that. Let's make some real clothes. I wonder if smart doll size skirt will work here. Maybe I should just draft from scratch. Just so you know, basically skirts do work interchangeably. And the one I'm making will fit Smart Doll and you can get it, actually the pattern, on enchantarium.com. I didn't feel like taking measurements that day, so I just did the pattern the good old tape up method and made a basic block that way. From that point, I started modifying it on paper and noticed that my epic sewing ruler, which you may have seen me cut last week on our laser, wasn't showing up the best on paper. So I inked the uh, engraved line so that you can see what I'm doing. At least now you can see the numbers. <laughs> 
With this newfound vision, I added some seam allowance with my special 7mm marking on my special ruler, which worked perfectly, other than me messing up the lines, and I was able to sew a prototype to test out any parts that still needed work. Her ass is so big that it has to be put on from the top. With the basic prototype done, I was able to add the details like the pleats and 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 <laughs> that was dumb. And the asymmetrical panel and make a nicer prototype. Happy with the result, I proceeded to make the real thing, which will not be the real thing, but for the purpose of me not re-recording the tutorial again, let's pretend for the next few minutes that it is the last time I made this skirt. I cut my main pieces out of a deep blue fabric and for my lining I used some nude cotton. You can make it in two ways, as a wrap skirt and with the closure in front, or with a zipper in the back. Now, a dream intermission. To jest najgorsze, że mi się śniło, że kupiłyśmy nową lankę. A mi się śniło, że byłyśmy w Warszawie na wycieczce, po czym pojechaliśmy na narty. Jakimś wielkim samochodem jechałyśmy pod wielką górę, a potem nie mogłyśmy wyhamować i wpadłyśmy do rzeki. I nagle ten samochód zmienił się w taki bardzo ciężki, ale dosyć duży plecak. I tak takim sposobem wyciągnęłyśmy nasze auto z rzeki. Good luck tłumaczyć to do filmu. A to się nazywa. Takim sposobem dzisiaj spałam bardzo długo, wyciągając samochód z rzeki w plecaku. Super. Super, nie? And now, the pattern. This step you can skip, because I didn't end up liking the two panels in the back, so I merged them into one panel, so you're not gonna do that. This is what your pieces are looking like, two solid back panels. Now, the pleat panel. First, hem the bottom of it. Mark at every line as in the pattern, or however you like. In this example, I made it however I liked, and then ended up not liking it, so maybe do it as the pattern says. But when you have your marks, start from the right side and fold the pleats into place and iron them. Continue pleating until you reach the seam allowance on the left side. For ease of sewing, secure the pleats by basting them within the seam allowance. Now we can finish this front panel by adding the top of it to the pleats right sides together. Now here I'm making the wrap variant, so I'm going to sew the back seams together. You can leave a space for the stand here at this point. And I'm going to add the front panels to the side seams of the back piece. That way our main skirt is still attached together. The non-pleated part is unhemmed at this point, so hem the unhemmed part now. And just make sure that the hem matches the pleat hem. Make a similar skirt for lining, just without the pleats and make sure that the lining doesn't peek out from the main skirt. Put the skirts right sides together and sew them from one side to the other, skipping the hem of course. Turn to the right side, press and contemplate on how to finish the skirt. To understitch or not to understitch? Nee. Nee, she said, knowing that she will regret it later. This is what it will look like, which I think is really cute. The only thing left is to try it on the doll, actually, to mark the batons. This is where it's really easy to adjust it to Attica or Smart Doll or Dolphy or whatever. So I will add my three buttons and it's finished! I added an extra button on the left side and three buttons on the right side to close the skirt properly. My fabric choice wasn't so great, so I redid the skirt in thinner cotton fabric and it looks less bulky, but this one's not bad, hey? Complete. Cute. For the shirt, I really wanted something simple, something easy, something fun, and this choice was none of those things. I picked up the free Smart Doll, Smart Doll, Smart Doll Henley shirt pattern and gave it a go in this bright blue lycra. And to preserve your attention span, I'll tell you right now, we didn't use it. And here's the only funny moment from me making it. No move. Pochwal mnie na wizji. Wierzę w ciebie. Dziękuję. Będzie dobrze. Będzie dobrze. Będzie dobrze. Nie, serio, wierzę w ciebie. I put the finished shirt on the doll and was very proud of myself. And you can also see the new skirt here. Ta-da! Minecraft Steve Yassified. This is what I think about this color combo. Minecraft Steve Yassified. <laughs> I think it's cute. It was a bit too boobalicious though, so I'm making a basic t-shirt instead. My pattern was missing one piece, but it was an easy job for my new and improved super cute ruler. I think the strap there is just a two centimeter strap. And it's the perfect time to show off my dolly ruler, which has markings every five millimeters so that it's easy to cut a strap like so. 
two centimeters. Amazing, and it's holographic. And I made one for my friend Beth, and I need to send it to her with her logo. Can you see it? All right, y'all. I'll I'll be the first to admit that my serger skills are a bit rusty. What is that? But we're gonna make this basic shirt a little more interesting with the other two machines in my army that I haven't used yet in this video. So let's do that. First, on the Cricut, I cut out a design of cake. I didn't know how else to incorporate cake into the design, so we're putting them right in the front, just like later Finn has a tattoo of Jake on his chest. So it seemed fitting. Then good old Elna helps me set the vinyls in place. Alex is going to put more details on top, but this is a good base. Since Fiona and Marceline are from the same universe, I decided to make a custom 3D printed head for Fiona, similar to the one I made for Marceline. At first, I thought removing the fangs would work, but I added more details like one-sided smile and more rounded eyes. And of course, I removed the spiky ears and sent the files to Barb to print on our resin 3D printer. Barb was testing a new resin color and it was a bit too orange looking, so I'm color matching the head with acrylic paint. When I'm happy with the base color, I can start sketching out the features. But first, as always, I'm coating the paint with two layers of matte acrylic varnish and two layers of MSC for that smooth, paper-like texture. I'm using watercolor pencils, acrylic paints and chalk pastels to paint the face. I managed to draw a lot on the first layer. It's not the prettiest at the moment, but trust the process. She's going to look so much better soon. I'm going for a cute look because the original Fiona was a very sweet person, but I'm adding some battle scars because she's going on adventure, right? She has to have some scratches. The scratch on her cheeks look like a <laughs> cat's paws and we all know that Fiona has a cat. Both Fiona and Finn have very expressive faces with a lot of loose teeth, so I thought why not give her a teeth gap in the front. The blue eyeliner looks very dark, so I'm adding a white base for a future baby blue paint. I know that Fiona from the new show is a little less feminine presenting and she probably wouldn't use much makeup, but if she's Finn's genderbent counterpart, I thought she could have some more girly features. We actually can't legally watch this show right now because it's only available in the US, so this is our version of the original Fiona from the genderbent episodes of the original show. I also wanted her to look good standing next to Marceline and she has very heavy punk rocky makeup so I gave her the same type of lashes and a thick spiky eyeliner. I'm adding some white details like hair on the brows and white lashes. The last step is one coat of Shine Perlex powder and the face is almost ready. There's one important feature missing and it's the eyes. I painted these by hand on a 3D printed base. I tried to make them in the same style as Marceline's eyes, so with a gradient and stars in the middle. I covered them in two layers of UV resin. I already made a pair of stocking off screen, but the white of the lycra I used didn't really look good with what I wanted to use for the hat, so I was contemplating how much I wanted to redo the stockings. Let's try to make a hat. First hat, not hat pee about it. That was a bad joke as well. Out. Attempt number two, we'll have less pieces. Hopefully we'll be nicer. I'm gonna start by making the back seam. I'm gonna pull it apart and maybe sew it a little bit like this, you know, better. I think that if I blend these seams a little bit more, it's gonna be great. Also, isn't she the cutest? This is our girl, Aqua. Currently doesn't have arms. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> I freehanded the ears at this point, but I saved the pattern and put it up for free on the EngineTerium.com doll shop website. I cut the main piece again, sewed the back seam, traced the curve, sandwiched the ears in, and then sewed the curve. I trimmed the seam allowance and the base hat is ready. <laughs> so cute. Let's make the shoes. The outfit we're making is mostly reference from the original Adventure Time gender bent episodes, so I'm making cute school loafers. I'm using my loafer last and sole combo from the Maria video, and these are all the materials that you will need. On my upper, I marked where the hem needs to fall down, and I'm making little snips in the curvy edges to make turning them under easier. 
I apply glue to the marked area and after it's dry to the touch, I fold the hem down, hammering it down when stubborn. Because I put the glue on both glued sides basically, the hold is pretty strong. I top stitch around this hemmed edge on my sewing machine. Next, I close the back seam on the machine and glue the seam allowance down either side, then secure that even more with more stitching. I attach the strap with a tiny rivet and because I don't care about lining this one, I'm ready to last this shoe. I temporarily tape the insole to the last and stretch the upper over it. I apply a line of glue along the inner edge of the upper and on the sole. When dry, I start pulling the last down onto the sole, pinching the fabric so that it curves along the last. I didn't set the focus quite right on this one, sorry. When the last is tight on the last, somebody wrote that wrong, when the, when the upper is tight on the last, we can fill in the area that didn't get any leather with some scraps. No! It's the one thing I swore not to do, and that is get glue on the mat. <laughs> Shit! Now, this is a razor. It's very, very sharp. I taped it so I don't get my fingers slashed. But if you are not as, I don't know, stupid as me, don't use a sharp razor. Although a sharp razor will make it easy to do this. Just don't be reckless, okay? With the excess pinches trimmed away safely, we can glue in the upper into the sole. And this is why I don't share this file yet. My sole is too deep, so I stuck some felt to have the upper stick out from the sole a bit more. It's it's a solution, but it's a not a good solution. I'm also using a flexible resin sole I printed a while back when I was testing the resin for our pyro custom. I cut the strap into a point and was ready to give it a closure. So I cannot for the life of me find these magnets. I set them aside when I did the test shoe, which was the first one, and then I promptly lost them. Instead of doing this one on the outside, I will do a big one on the inside and do one of the small ones on the strap and hope that it works the same. I attached the magnets with a dot of super glue. It's not as strong as the other one because this one I need a little bit more force to pull up but I think for the purposes of the doll wearing it, it's done. I'll add some insoles with the logo and they're finished. Yay! I think one of the more important features of Fiona is her backpack so let's make one. The pattern is also on the website. I first prepared some 5mm straps and set them aside. Next I prepared the pocket flap by sewing it right sides together with its lining and top stitching it on the right side. On the outer bottom panel I'm adding tiny rivets kind of like those little feet some bags have. My piece wasn't as thick for the rivets so I added some felt to pat it out. I cut off a bit of one of the straps and fray checked it then attached it to the top flap with the rivets as a way to make a tiny handle. I hemmed the front pocket edge and pleated the side so the pocket can be spacious and hold a bunch of stuff. I don't know what, but a bunch of stuff. I top stitched the pocket onto the front outer piece and based it at the bottom. I took more strap pieces and laid them above the pocket, clipping them into place because they were too thick to pin. I put the pocket flap on top of the straps and stitched the flap to the front. It's time to put the outer piece together. We were attaching the front and back to the bottom piece and then with a small loop sandwiched in between the top flap to the back. If you don't want to use rivets, put in your straps on this edge as well. Now we're going to line this whole thing, leaving a gap to turn it to the right side along the back piece. That's where it's going to be easiest to hide. If you sewed in your straps, then put them at the sides and sew them in as well. Trim the seam allowance, turn the backpack to the right side, top stitch around the perimeter of this piece to secure the opening, and if you didn't attach the straps, do it now with the rivets. Okay, so because I messed up, I'm just gonna attach them here. And if you like this look, you can also do that. Now the main back pouch. Another foresight from Future Barb. If you have the pattern, do it the way I wrote it out and not the way I did it here. Uh, but when you get to closing the bottom, this is the tricky bit. Fold the piece at a 45 degree angle and mark the seam allowance so you don't sew through it. Sew to that point and that point only and not beyond that point. After you do that on both sides, snip the seam allowance, snip, 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 the seam allowance <laughs> and to that ending point but not through the stitching and align the remaining row edges together and stitch them together. You should make a bag with a rectangular bottom that way. Now I had to attach my lining and main together but you should have it together already because you're doing it with a pattern so. But for the stupid ones, like myself, I have to attach these in round, which is not fun because it's small. 
But with both of the components complete, we can put them together. I first mocked it up with some clips to determine my final strap length and attach them with rivets. And the rest is glue. I used some good old woohoo glue because I know that this glue is basically indestructible. For my little straps I added some buckles to decorate and to close the backpack I used a few magnets and we're done. Time to add some more life to our props. First I'm painting the soles of the shoes. The black ones are not a perfect fit so I'm painting them dark blue. Next is the backpack. I started to paint it with this dark olive color but I quickly realized it's too dark. I covered it with a much lighter lime green paint and I think it looks much better. Now what about these two blobs of vinyl? Let's make them look like cake. I'm simply adding shape to the eyes and outline a few parts with black. And she looks super cute! We got a cute hat, but let's add some hair under it. I wondered for a bit if I could fake the hair and make only the front piece like she has in the cartoon, but I chose to make a whole wig. Wow, that's something new. Me volunteering to make a wig when it's not necessary. I don't know what happened. I started from making a wig cap from stretchy fabric and glue. When it's ready, I glue blonde weft starting from the back and going up. I'm using UHU contact glue because I want to use heat later to style the hair and hot glue could melt. The parting is always a problem when I'm doing a wig using synthetic fibers and I had to figure out how to make the front strand of hair sticking out of the hat. I glued a bump made with paper mache technique and glued some fiber on top. Then I glued a few wefts from the inside of the wig cap and styled it with hair straightener. But something was still not alright with this look, it's a little bit too plain, too simple. So we decided to curl the hair with plastic straws and bobby pins. This fiber turned out to be a little bit stubborn when it comes to wrapping and pinning it, but I managed to make it somehow. Not my favorite part, but it's alright. <laughs> Off camera I put it in boiling hot water for a minute and then immediately went to another bowl, this time with ice cold water to set the curl. I let it dry overnight and we can untangle the curls. She looks so cute in this hairstyle, but it needs a trim. When you curl the hair with body pins and plastic straws, you always have to think about losing some of the length because the ends are very straight and we don't want straight hair. They turned out a bit shorter than the new Fiona has, but we don't know what's hidden under the original Fiona's hat. <laughs> One of the songs from Adventure Time starts with Come along with me with the butterflies and bees. So I'm adding a few butterflies to the hat, like she was a Disney princess and also a bee choker. Fiona's design was inspired not only by Finn, but also Usagi from Sailor Moon. And that's why I want to add just a bit of magical girl touch by adding a cute bow to the hat. Let's take care of some more props. We are back at the Lassier Station, which is very loud probably right now. But I had a really cool idea for a prop that we can make. So we make the prop. For this to work, I need to check the curve of the machine, which is basically the width of the material that is lost when laser cutting. I'm gonna cut out a rectangle and then measure it and see how different it is from the measurement I put in. Here's my rectangle. Here's my little close-up area so I know where to place it. I wasted an awful lot of material by doing this last time, so I'm trying to use it up a bit more. So we press start, we press start, and it's done! We're gonna check how different this is. So I put in 30 and it's 29.8. So that means that 0.2 millimeter of acrylic has gotten eaten. Here are my scientific findings. So the 100% very loose. Then I did 102%. And that was just way too big. Like, I cannot possibly force that in there. Then I just decided to make an additional outline. Uh, and it fits, but it's still a little loose. But I can feel that it's just going to, see, it's going to fall away. So for the tightest fit, I think we're going to do with plus 0.15 of an outline. Like, if I wedge it in there, it's not going to fall out. This is so epic! What? 
While I was at the laser, I made some more sewing rulers for me and for my friend Beth, who suggested I add inch measurements to the other side so it's even more functional. And I just had to make it sparkly, because why not? I already closed up the shop and I left and I like walked 10 steps away that I forgot to cut the eye, which is this big. But I had to come back for it, so hopefully it fits. After I got home with the pieces, everything was fitting together perfectly, thank God. And I had a fun puzzle to put together. I was using this weird acrylic glue, which is actually more like a solvent, which softens the acrylic so that it can weld itself with itself. Piece by piece I attached the things together, but it was not my cleanest job, I have to admit, as the solvent is really runny. Here, for example, you can see my fingerprint. <laughs> I just realized that these pieces doesn't cut. I have to go back. <laughs> Imagine being this stupid. It's not that they didn't cut out. I just didn't pop them out and they didn't bring them with me. Bruh. After that little fiasco, I set the remaining pieces in place and with the help of my favorite sister, I put the half box together. Oh, what do you think? Może za 50 razem będzie bez skazy. Ale fajne to jest. This is how she turned out. I have to admit that I am not a fan of the show, as in, not that I'm hating the show, but like I didn't watch Adventure Time, nor did I watch Fiona and Cake because HBO decided that it's not gonna be available in Poland. But I really enjoy making the cartoon characters into, I guess, not even semi-real characters, but like into three-dimensional characters, if you know what I'm saying. So it's really fun to play with adding complexity to the designs from like a 2D rectangle to a skirt with pleats and buttons and everything. So I think it's a fun adventure, <laughs> pun intended, to let your creativity just soar and have some fun, even if it's uh, meant to be a simple project to relax, I guess. I don't know, I like it. Do you like the new Fiona and Cake series? I love the concept of making a more deep and mature show based on Adventure Time, but I haven't seen it. I only saw reviews of the episodes on YouTube. Where is a VPN sponsor when needed? <laughs> anyway, let us know if you like the doll and the show. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks, subscribe for future videos, stay to the end of the video for bloopers, have an enchanted day, and we will see you next time. Bye! And this video was made thanks to our Patreons. The biggest credit goes to our top tier Lost Sister supporters. Mary Chandler, Mary Helen Burns, Call Me Ash, Barb from the Future, Erin McCoy, and Red X. We also thank our cousin tier patrons, Zippy McAdoo, Emma Thomas, Yumi Azura, Sos Arelli, Galina Harcion, Lucky Ducky Lulu, Sirius Eden, Even Draws Things, Mavi, Gianette, Josephine Falk, Kaylee M, Melissa Novoa, Rind, Fan of TA, Catherine G, Ashley Etwell, Hannah Lemon, Elise Sherbet, Zari, Amelia Blackwood, Andrea Brigadier, Ghostly Gardens, Brianna Tegan, The Barbie Witch, Bowen, Inca, Stephanie, Tiffany Jeffords, Carho, Landy Monk, Jane Beck, Caribou, Sips Party, Dragon Art Costumes, Ninja Star Dazino, Dream Up, and last but not least, Catherine Nodden. Thanks, guys. Whoa, 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 whoa